Welcome back to Bailiwick and Guernsey Shipwrecks. Today we're going to head out from Gronhav. Um, it's decent weather, so we're going to go up to the Platte to have a scallop dive. That's a grown braise. That's Platte Fougere. The first built on man's lighthouse in the British Isles. All these rocks are here. Some Kunups. The Kunups pole is just in the middle of that desert island beach there, right in the middle. There's Buex rock. Those ones out there get painted white for navigation, that isn't good. But... Fort Plum, Fort Doyle, Hotel Marina, Paradis. Yeah, Parody, Octol, Beck Dundu, the Platte, which is the green one, the Brehon Tower, Corbett Dam Mont, the yellow one. Jetu, Herb, Saar. All the knees visible, just about that a bit in the middle there. And just beyond the plant, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, it's quite far away, there's white buildings. That's Flamenville Nuclear Power Station. Good to go. Almost there. Uh, see what. Uh... We can see on the bottom. Come on, come on, in slow mo going over the side. Oh. There you go. Oh, this looks good. Yeah. yeah always is up here. Well, well I say, oh, not always. <laughs> 38 meters. Yeah, we said you'd have 38 meters. Did you feel alright? Or did you feel not? A little, bit, no. a little bit rubbery. A little bit, little bit spongy. Yeah. A little martini, I think. Just a little one. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. Hey, yeah. Scallops. You did well. There's a good egg, dogfish, scallops.
Today I'm going to be joining Paul Carre on a scallop dive. This is a scallop dive with a slight change. So we are going down into deep water, 36 meters of water. And also Paul will be introducing a stage gas so he can go into decompression. Um, his stage bolt was attached to the top of his scallop line. This is different to how I normally dive. Um, I'll be leaving the bottom before going into decompression. I'm going to come back up Paul's line uh, and wait for him next to the bottle to see when he comes up. It's going to slowly get darker and darker as we drop down. So we've just gone past 25 metres and here's the bottom. I'm going to stick close to Paul because I haven't got any uh, line with me. I've got delayed SMB in my pocket um, if I need it. Uh, as always, it's a bit of a safety measure um, in case I separate from Paul. But I'm going to try and keep, keep next to Paul and then come up his line. Uh, with me not taking a line, it's a little bit easier to film. Um, but a downside is I have got no bag to put any scallops in. So if I find any, I'll be slipping them into Paul's bag. Check out the scallops from the surface. That one was actually upside down. This one's the right way around. Uh, they have been moving because there's starfish in the area, and as the starfish get close to them, they actually swim away. It's one of their uh, deterrents and one of their ways of not getting eaten. It's worth mentioning the scallops up at the platter are a lot larger and a lot cleaner than the ones we normally get down the east coast towards the harbour. This is because the seabed up here is uh, a lot cleaner um, and they haven't got the uh, traffic and all the other pollutions that come with a harbour. At 35 metres, I've only got between 8 and 9 minutes bottom time before I go into decompression. So when you're at this depth, you really want to um, try and look a bit faster than you normally do. That's why my camera is a bit more juddery, moves quite a bit more. That was me trying to be sneaky um, and put him in the bag. I don't think Paul realised I was trying to do it, <laughs> so that's why he continued swimming on. As we swim along in the dark, we find this little thing. Some sort of an enemy. I'm not quite sure what that one is. If you know, can you put it in the comments? Plenty of spider crabs left, but they're all small, very relaxed, or tired. That one's too small, never put that one back. Oh look, it's a shanker. I call them shankers in Guernsey, but everyone knows them as brown edible crabs. All these male spider crabs look almost lifeless. They're definitely alive because I can see their little male things moving. So I know they're breathing. Mm. 
not doing too much filming of Paul because it's annoying when you get shined at with your torches in the face. You lose your night vision, so I'm trying to keep my torches away from him. got three minutes left and we've actually got a little bit shallower now we're in 34 meters we're swimming in a southwesterly uh, direction so it's actually getting shallower Notice when you turn the lights off, everything seems to be sort of uh, bluey green, and all the lighter colours, the red colours, and the orange colours seem to disappear. Check out this crab, he's only got three legs and he's still battling on. Here's another anemone, not quite sure what this one is either. Getting very close to the end of my dive now. It's a spiny starfish looking for some mollusks to eat, probably scallops. That one's too small, so Paul's left it there. When you see scallops like this and it's empty, you wonder what happened to them. Because they weren't shocked by a human because the shells are still together. So they must have been eaten by one of the dreaded starfish. now time for me to go back up. I've got a one minute deco stop at three meters now. You can ask yourself, how come I've done 11 minutes 28? That's because I've come up and sh into shallower water and the computer's allowed for that.
I'm now back up at Paul's stage bottle. So this small bottle that's hanging on his line has got 100% oxygen in it. So what it's going to do is going to turbocharge his decompression. So it's pretty much going to half. So I've done my deco, which cleared before I got to my three meter. And also I have done my whole safety stop, which is another three minutes. Paul has only just come back up, so he, he roughly had about eight or nine minutes extra on the bottom than I did. You notice he has no longer got his bag of scallops, because those are being left on the bottom, which is tied to the end of this rope. You see here he's got a uh, system where uh, you undo one clip and you clip that to yourself. He's just turning it on. He clips this to himself. It's done on its safety tether and now it allows him to unclip the second one. It's done in this sequence so you don't drop the bottle. Um, he'd be hanging around for a long time if he dropped the bowl. Now he's just swapping over. Now he go to his computer and he will select uh, gas, which is 100%. And now that will work out his decompression obligations. to get out the water. Look how clean they are as well, eh, compared to the ones we get down the harbour. Yeah, they're nice. They're, they're nice. nice. They're big as well. Very big. Done all right there. Eh? That's it then, back home. Oh well, that's been good. We got a west coach mission. Another, another yeah. deep dive for Jen. Yeah. yeah, another deep, deep dive for Jen. 38 metres, new PB. Someone's taking a bite out the side of it. Yeah. Looks like something's come in and just taken a bite mark out the bottom.